Hey guys, it's Noah. I'm here with Kelly. Uh, Kelly, what are you with again? Signature Home Lending. So, um, I was just, uh, you know, Kelly stopped by, um, and I was just thinking that, uh, you know, we've been, 2000, what happened in 2008 in real estate? Gosh, the, cra the, the crash. The, the minor dip in real estate, or some people call it a major crash, right? It so was everybody, a major. Remembers, everybody remembers 2008. It was, you know, it was epic, right? It was, um, it was Basically, horrible, right? It was actually like the second biggest economic crash in history since the Depression. And most of, most people think that's way behind us, right? It's, it's like it's been exactly, we're coming up on 10 years right. since, um, since the government came out with, with, their, with their programs, right? right? Now, so it kind of, let's go back to 2008. Everybody was, not, it seemed like everybody, at least everybody knew somebody, a neighbor on the street that was having the house foreclosed on. That was having their house. Uh, um, they had to do short sales. They were all just walking away from their houses, right? right. People were just walking away. Um, but some people try to try to hold on to their house, right? Right. So, so let's go back to 2008. If you if you're underwater, right? You, properties went from like five hundred thousand dollars. They bought a five hundred. Now they're only worth two hundred thousand dollars, right? Right. A lot of people walked away from their homes, and I have to say, I think a lot of people walked away from their their homes maybe unnecessarily. Just because the values had yeah. dropped and they felt like they, you know, they were going to lose a lot of money, it was better for them to walk away. Which made the problem way worse. Way yeah. worse. Yes. It, it just exasperated the, the 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 problem, right? Exactly. But for the people that kept, that wanted, they, they they loved their house, they wanted to fight for their house. They 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 didn't care that they were upside down. Right, and that was the sad part, no, because there there were a lot of people in bad loans, so they. They had, you know, adjustable loans or those pick a payment, 1%, where every month they got the option to pay the minimum payment or the interest only, which most people always wanted to pay, you know, the smallest payment, but they weren't complete, you know, explained how those, Especially the, to how the, those um, programs worked. The, 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 the variable interest rate, you yes. know, that really got a lot of people. Um, and guys, um, uh, you may want to close yours for a second, right, because lenders... <laughs> Especially the, the the big houses, right? They they're always going to get theirs, right? So so no matter th there was a lot of remodify their loans, loan well, remodifications. I always think when you know when nobody expected that to happen, obviously. And well, well, I mean, someone did. You see the movie The Big Short? They knew that was yeah. coming. But the uh, you know whenever something happens like that, there's always adjustments. You know, new programs will come out. Something will adjust because obviously it, it can't continue to. To go on the way the uh -huh. way that it was, or so the um, so actually in 2009 is when the the MHA the Making Home Affordable Act came came into play, where the the it was a government relief program, and there was there were a few programs that were underneath that to assist homeowners, but I think the the two is it okay if I go sure. on? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. the the two major programs I think m most uh, common were the HARP program, which was the Home Affordable Refinance program, and the HAMP program, which is the Home Affordable Modification program. So the HARP program was probably the first place that we would start with clients, where if they would allow you to refinance up to 125% of the value of the home to lower the homeowner's interest rate, and in turn lower their house payment, and then making it, you know, a little more affordable for them, putting them on a fixed loan, getting them off of that adjustable mortgage. Then the clients that couldn't qualify for that, that they were too under, too much underwater on, on the uh, value of the home, they could apply for the HAMP program, so the modification well, program. H, H A M P HAMP. We call it HAMP, but it's the Home Affordable Modification Program. Uh -huh. So that was when these loan mods, you know, came into play where the banks would put the homeowners on a much, much lower interest rate. They were getting like the 2% or 3% interest rate. But the problem with those loans is that they were taking the, the interest that the client is saving and tacking it onto the back of the loan in most cases. Not, there yeah, were this, some. This is, this is a really important piece here, right? So they, they weren't just, that the banks, especially the big banks, they're not just giving away that interest, right? They're not just, right. Added, Think of um, I bank at Chase. I love Chase, but they're not going to do anything because they like me, right? They're going to get theirs. They're going to get that interest rate one way or the or the other, right? So that they weren't right. just forgiving all the stuff. Some there were some companies that did. Some some that some, did. Some, 
But unfortunately, I think most of the the major banks did not. Well, some of them went out of business too, right? Yeah, it definitely. So there, there, and there again, there were little loan modification po companies popping up all over the place, which again, you know, there you always have to watch out for that too. When something new comes out like that, you have to be careful. It's important that you have people that you trust or get referrals from people that you trust. Because the, some of those companies, those loan modification companies, I heard time and time again clients coming in saying that they, they paid this company X amount of dollars to help them modify their loan, and then the comp, you know, they disappeared on them. So the, the, there was a lot of bad stuff going on even then. But uh, the, the HAMP program, so the modification programs, tacking that interest onto the back, they put it on a balloon payment. So it was you know, most of the time three, five, seven years where then at the end of that that term the balloon payment comes due well they've extended this you know a couple times already so now we're looking at you know we're getting to the 10-year the mark um the well and it took you know some clients a few you know a couple years getting into that they didn't just all refinance in 2009, yeah, 2009 yeah. so it, it did take a couple years for the industry to adjust but they now that these are coming due you know it, there's there probably is going to be a lot more foreclosures and short sales. So, so it's been ten years now. So, so the ten-year window uh, is coming due, right? So, there's a lot of people that that uh, that had this home uh, loan remod or loan mods, right? Uh, loan modifications. That balloon payment is coming due. It's been ten years. So, we're starting to see an uptick in foreclosures and short sales, right? Why? Because a lot of these balloon payments, I think values have increased, right? Right. Since 2008. But when you have a giant balloon payment that's going to come due pretty soon, what are you going to do? So for, for a lot of people, they just kind of postponed the inevitable, right? They, 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 um, they're about to lose their house 10 years ago, and, and they might lose their house now. So, uh, for, so for those people who, who have these loan mods, they have the giant balloon payments, that are afraid that they're going to lose their house again, right? Right. Because it's, it's almost like a repeat of 2008. What do you have to offer them now? I, I do think that it, we might have a little bit of a re, repeat, but definitely not as bad because people are more conscious of it now. Uh, I actually, I really hadn't thought too much about this, but I, you know, it's, it's kind of been in the back of my mind. Um, you know when when all this stuff was going to come but it's been again years since we've thought about it but there are actually three options so we can either you know go back to that the heart program so the refinance program so now maybe we have a little more equity in the property so those are still so up and running they are, can still, yes we can still okay. qualify for those but the 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 major condition for that the one main condition is that it has to be a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac Product, which means your your mortgage is owned by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. If it is not, we won't be eligible for the for the HARP program. But the other options are we we can do you can pay off that additional interest, which is essentially kind of a second loan, or you can refinance onto a regular FHA or conventional loan if we have enough equity, and then get rid of that and again put you on a fixed loan because those loan modifications are arms; they're adjustable. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we, we do have options, but it is, it's getting, that program is, the heart program is going away and we, we don't anticipate that it's going to be extended because it already has been extended a couple times and it's coming due in December, December 31st of this year. So definitely if you're in one of those loan modifications, you know, give me a call, come yeah. and see us, let's check don't it out. Don't stick your head in the sand, don't, don't just wait it out. So you, you really need to get on, uh, you need to call her or call a lender as soon as you can, that way you're, you're beating the curve, right? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it can be. And it takes time. So you can't come December 1st and then, you know, everybody rush in the door at December 1st and then, you know, what if, if you don't qualify for that program, we need another option. So definitely the, the sooner you can come in, the better, at least just to, to have a plan and get, get prepared. Okay, so, so yeah, if you're in that boat, I definitely need, need to talk to her to, to get this uh, resolved. But. Um, and I, I don't, I, none of, I don't know of any of my clients who are in that boat. Uh, I primarily deal with a lot of sellers and some buyers. So if if you're a seller, right? So if you're selling, if your house is on the market right now, I I think you have uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you have about three months 
before I start seeing a, a lot more houses on the market. Right now, if you're a seller, it's a good time to sell. There isn't a lot of availability. Our, 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 uh, our inventory is pretty low, but come December, actually maybe even November, as people start calling you and maybe they can't you know, refinance, they can't afford it, so they're gonna start looking at dumping those properties, right? Or right. They, they, they may That's start. a very good point, Noah. Yes, yeah, so if the sellers are waiting, if we do hit a little bit of a, a bump there with foreclosures and short sales, that's going to bring values down a little bit. So if the sellers are wanting to get, you know, the most for their property, they really need to consider selling. So I represent a lot of sellers, and I usually uh, I'm pretty aggressive on price. I, I want if if the if the going rate is is here, you know, let's say two hundred thousand, I'll say hey, let's let's ask you know two hundred five, two hundred ten, because it's there isn't a lot of inventory, right? Uh, so I think you can be a little bit more aggressive on on asking. Uh, on a little higher asking price, um, but we need to do that pretty quick because things I think are going to start changing. November, December, things are going to start changing. January, of course, that that time of year is obviously slower anyhow, but it's going to be compounded by more inventory, right? So if you're a seller, if there's more inventory in the market, that's going to drive uh, competition. Competition always uh, drives prices down. Okay, so if you're thinking of selling. You need to you need to decide if you're going to sell or not before there's more houses on the market. Okay, so uh, so sell as soon as you can. Don't fire sell it right now. Still a good time to sell. You can still get a pretty good price, but as we start nearing December, uh, your asking price is going to start. I think either flatlining or slightly declining come January. Right, and even if they're they're not listing it for that, we have appraisals to deal with. So you might think that your home's still valued at, at that higher value, but the appraiser sees the whole yeah. picture. So the appraiser sees the foreclosures and the short sales in your neighborhood that you might not know are there. So even if somebody and, wants to pay two fifty for a house, the appraiser says no, it's only right. worth two twenty five. Right. Well, then we're that's, what are you gonna do? We're only allowed to finance for the appraised value and then minus the required down payment for that program. Exactly. Now you can pay out of pocket, you can pay the extra twenty five thousand dollars to to buy that house. So if, if I want to buy a house for two fifty it only appraises at 225. You guys will only lend 225. Right. So I could, as a buyer, put up the extra twenty five thousand dollars. It never happens, but but you, you could. You could pay the difference out of pocket. And in 13 years, I've been doing loans. I've seen that only happen twice, and both times it be it was because it was a home that had been in their family oh, previously. Okay. It had a, a great deal of sentimental value. So okay. your home is most likely not going to have that sentimental value for a buyer, and and you're going to lose that. Yeah, that yeah. I'm getting ready to list a few houses right now, and boy, I, I need to get them on the market uh, and try to sell those as quickly as possible because I think uh, a few months things are going to change. Okay, so on the other side, if you're looking at selling a house, I'm sorry, if you're looking at buying a house. If you're a buyer on the uh, looking for a house, um, I think um, if you're not in a rush, and this is um, I'm probably being a horrible salesperson right now, but if you're not in a rush, I would say wait. I'd say. Um, that there's not a lot of choice out there right now. If you don't need to buy, right now you're, you're buying it at a bit of a premium. I think come November, December, January, I think there's going to be a lot more inventory. I think prices are going to, even if prices stay the same, you're going to have more choices. Come January, you'll have more choices on what houses are available. Um, so, which will give you some better, some more time to, to get your your your. Uh, your finances in, in, uh, right. in well, line. I think definitely, I mean, even if you're not planning on buying till you know, the end of the year, beginning of the year, come in and get pre-qualified. Because even if you're not in a hurry, the best thing you can do is be prepared, though. You, you know what exactly. price range you're looking in, you know what you need out of pocket, and then just, and, and then have Noah set you up on your, I forgot what they're called, but you, you set them up where they get emails for the, yeah, the, the, the listings. Yeah, the auto searches, you yeah. Give uh, know your criteria. You know the areas you're looking in: bedrooms, bathrooms, price range. And then, as those come to you, if you see something that you like, yeah. then then you know you you know that you're ready and you can go put an offer. So you don't have to just completely, you know, no, I'm not going to look at any houses and you know till December or January. If your home comes up or a home that you love, absolutely buy. It. Because one thing also to keep in mind though is is interest rates. So we haven't talked about that a lot. Those can go up. So even though there might be more choices on the houses, the interest rates are higher, your payments are going to be higher. 
So, so I think it's a good idea to be be prepared now and don't rush on the house. I mean, you're you're making a thirty year commitment. Yeah. So you, you know. If, or fifteen year. Or a fifteen year commitment, but I like you know, fifteen year commitments. <laughs> you're you're getting married with your home, so you know you. You want to to take your time. Don't be in a rush, but but be prepared. So if something comes up, then you can make an offer. And then if you know if Noah's telling everybody to wait till December, you're gonna have a lot less competition right now. So you can go. There's a lot of competition right now. So um, and really, um, all the good deals go fast, right? So you have to be ready to to just jump on that yes. good deal, right? So if you find the perfect house, I think at a little bit better price come December. Uh, you can jump on it because good deals are going to go fast, right? So right. if you don't have the pre-qual letter already in hand, uh, uh, so if a good deal comes comes on board, you know, you, you, I send you an email, your perfect house showed up at a great price, you don't have time to start now going to to, to, to get a pre-qual letter. You don't have, well, by the time you do all that, somebody who already has all the stuff in a row in line is going to get the house. It right? just makes it more stressful for you. It's supposed to be a happy experience. Yeah, so you don't want to rush. No, when you're rushed and then you feel pressured, it, it just takes some of the joy out of the process. No. Hey guys, sorry, the battery died. Okay, so what we're talking about if uh, if you're pre-qualified, right, you need to get everything in line. You, you, you right, so thing. that you're not rushing when you when you do find the house. You want to be ready, have already know how much money you're going to need out of pocket, be able to put in a, a good competitive, solid offer, and. I, you know, if you, I always encourage my buyers, don't put an offer on a home that you don't absolutely love. If you're kind of, oh, okay, if I get it or I don't, that's not your house. Let it go. So when you, when you do find that home and you, you walk out of that feeling like that's, that's my house and you don't want anybody else to live there, put an offer on it. Don't wait. It's, it's I think you scooted away from me. What's up with that? You see uh, further away. Coming back over. <laughs> They don't wait to put an offer on it because they. I've seen that somebody posted where the, the house that you see today that you're thinking about putting an offer on tomorrow, somebody else saw it yesterday and they're putting their offer today. So, again, don't put a home, an offer on any home that you don't love, but when you love it, put your offer jump in. Jump on it. Yeah, jump, jump on, on it. it. Yeah. So, um, and, and we don't we don't want to rush this process, right? So you want to get all this up front. You want to get all your ducks in a row now. That way you're not rushing to, right. to get a, a prequal. Getting the, the prequal is, is the stressful part of that. That's what makes you feel pressured and rushed. When you already have all that lined up, you know how much money you need, you understand the process, you know what you're looking at, then you're not scared to put an offer on the house. It's when you don't have all of your ducks in a row, you don't have all of that done, that makes you panicked and scared and, well, how much do I need and what's my payment going to be? So get all of that out of the way up front and, and then it's, it's so fun. So if, if you're a buyer, get your, get your prequal, sit tight, uh, start watching the market. You'll start seeing an increase in inventory. Prices are going to flatline, maybe even go down a little bit, and then that's going to be the perfect time to buy. Uh, once I email you a listing, let's go see it, jump on it, make an offer, move in. Right. And another thing too, you know, with the, with the values on the homes, you know, when we talked earlier about the, you know, the values dropping so drastically. When I purchased my home, it was, I think, two, 235. What year was that? Uh, at, oh God, 2000, I think it was around 2008. Um, well, it was before, before the values had dropped. I didn't purchase it at the peak, but I was kind of in the middle. Uh -huh. And at some point during their, um, the, the value of my home went down to about maybe like 165000 So, you know, my husband was like, hey, let's, you know, we should get out of this. Like, we're way underwater, which we talked about some uh -huh. of the people that did that. I didn't want to do that. My house payment hadn't changed. I was on a fixed loan. I still loved my house. I was comfortable with the payment. Nothing had changed except for the value of the home to everybody else. The value of the home to me didn't change. But I stayed with it, and now it's gone around the other way, where I'm probably worth like 250, 260, and I owe 200. So keep that in mind with real estate. If you're thinking, oh well, if, you know, if you do find a home that you love, but if I wait two more months, I might get a twenty thousand dollars less. Twenty thousand dollars in real estate is nothing. Yeah. You could lose that or gain that in a day. So take into serious consideration the value of that home to you personally, not just on the market. Yeah, twenty thousand spread over thirty years. You're you like. 
two bucks a month or something, and you right? may not it's even stand cheap. on home forever. I mean, my first yeah. home I bought, I walked in and I, I didn't even get past the living room. I'm, I'm going to live here forever. You know, three years later, eh, I need a second home. <laughs> like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I need a bigger backyard. You know, so it's probably, especially if it's your first home, it is more than likely not going to be your forever home. It's, it's practice. But it's a, it's a great stepping stone for you, and it's going to allow you to be able to move into that second home and have a little bit better payment and, and just be more knowledgeable about the, the uh, real estate industry. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think there's going to be uh, be interesting. So one of the differences between now and 2008, I don't think it's going to be nearly as bad as 2008, um, Potentially could be, but I don't think it is because 2008, everything, our economy was built on new construction. Everybody was in new construction. Everybody was buying new houses. Everybody was buying a second new house. Uh, the whole economy was, was kind of driven by new construction, right? And so when that stopped, everybody was unemployed. I think our economy is way different. There's not a lot of new construction out there still. There's some, but not a whole yeah. bunch. Um, so, so I think I think our economy is way different than it was uh, ten years ago. So even even if we start getting into all those foreclosures, I don't think it's going to be nearly as bad. No, because we we're a little more conscious of it now. You know, we've been we've been through that, and usually again, we, you know, the market adjusts. If if you know something like that happens, there's going to be I'm sure programs or or new things that are going to come out that are going to be able to help. Mm -hmm. You know, stop something. Nobody wants that to happen again. That crash was horrible. It just for the entire economy. So many things are affected by, by the real estate market. All right, perfect. Hey guys, we got to split. Um, so if you want to to get set up with lending, that way you're ahead of the curve, right? Talk to Kelly. How do they get a hold of you? Yes, please call me on my cell phone. That's the best number to reach me at. I do have an office line, and you can leave a voicemail there, but. I'm in and out, like today I'm visiting Noah at his office. So call me on my cell phone, please. It's 661-817-6131. Again, my name is Kelly Carrera with Signature Home Lending at 661-817-6131. And uh, test her. Test everything, right? So even even my, my analysis, my hypothesis of, of, of increased foreclosures, test it. So if you're watching, today is what today? Today is August 3rd. Check in two weeks. Are there more foreclosures and short sales going on in two weeks or two months, right? Let's test it. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I think it is. So give me a call, and I'll let you know if, if foreclosures and short sales are on the increase, right? Um, if they are, right, I can track to see uh, what percentage of the properties are in our short sale foreclosures, and we'll see, see where that's going. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we go the completely other way. I doubt it, but test it. It'll be interesting to see. All right, guys. See ya.